Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how we can run this application that we've been creating until now into Docker using a Docker file and Docker Compose. And just, let me just prefix this video by saying that this is not a video about Docker. This is just a video about ASP.NET Core and how we can run our application, our website into Docker using a Docker file and Docker Compose. That's all. I'm not going to go in depth into the different um, steps uh, in the docker file it's actually very bog standard boilerplate code there i'm just going to explain what's going on in the docker compose and then show you how you can run it so that's what you're going to get out of this video if you want a docker tutorial that goes in depth on what docker is and what it does uh, there's so many on youtube in this one i'm just going to show you what's going on in dotnet core so first things first what we need is a docker file and the docker file will be a bunch of instructions to essentially build our web uh, site in docker and run it i'm going to name this just docker file and i'm going to create it in the root of the tweetbook project and um, these um, commands i'm going to use now this this text i'm going to write in here is quite the boilerplate code in fact if you're going to visual studio and you just say create new project with docker support you're going to get this code back. I'm just going to type it here, explaining step by step what it is, but I'm not going to go in depth. So first things first, we need um, the SDK, and that's the Microsoft SDK, the .NET Core 2.2 SDK. So we're going to do Microsoft.NET, and then we're going to say 2.2 SDK as build. And we're going to pull the um, .NET SDK from uh, the Docker registry. And then we're going to add a few arguments. This is uh, the build config. And we're going to say that this is the release. Um, this instructs later .NET publish to use the release version, not the, um, not the debug. And then we're going to say version and you can have some um, versioning. I'm just going to say uh, 1.0.0. And then we're going to say copy. And you'll see IntelliSense telling us that we can copy this csproj, which is what we want. And we want to copy this into the build folder. And then we want to say run. And we're going to run a .NET restore in that build folder against that um, csproj. And we're going to do that to restore all the dependencies for our application. And then we're going to do some copying. I'm going to say copy everything from this directory, which is our projects, into the build. And we're also going to set the working directory as the build, which is where we're copying all our build uh, things. And then I'm just going to say run .NET publish, which is the command, the .NET SDK command that will um, publish our project, in this case, our website or API. So sysproj, and we're going to specify what the build config is. And we're also going to specify the version. So output into the out folder, and I'm going to say version equals version, and this should be enough. And now, because we don't run it using the SDK, we run it using the uh, runtime. We're going to do from Microsoft.NET 2.2 ASP.NET Core, because we have an ASP.NET Core project, and uh, that will change to runtime. And then we're going to set the work in there to up. And we're going to say copy from build into build out and our entry point for this Docker file is the command .NET and the parameter is the DLL that we generated in this case tweetbook.dll so here we have the docker file for our uh, application um, however as you can see we are not only using a .NET API here, we also need a database. And in Docker, you would spin up a database as well. It could happen in the Docker file. However, 
the recommended approach is to create a Docker Compose, which actually contains everything about your application, every dependency you need essentially, and it spins it up so you can run your project completely isolated without having any dependency in your actual environment, um, in your workstation. It will just pull everything into Docker isolated. So what we need to do now is I'm just going to go to the top level, not in the project level, but in the solution level, because this we could have multiple projects in here. I don't want to do it here. I'm just going to create a new Docker Compose, and that will be a YAML file. And I'm going to push that here so we can work on it. And in here, I'm going to say that I want the version 3.5 of Docker Compose. And first, I'm going to specify some networks. In this case, it's just one. I'm going to name it local dev. And this is the network that my application will use to communicate with the database. So name local dev. Um, then I'm going to specify my services. And this is where we specify our API and our database. First, I'm going to go with my API. So I'm going to say main API. And I'm going to say you will build from and it's only one directory, I'll just say tweetbook. So essentially this directory here, then I can say um, restart always. And the reason why we do this is because the database can actually start and this can start, even though it depends on the database, the database might not be ready and this might throw an exception. So we wanna restart in case of a failure. I could say on fail, but you're gonna have to deal with error codes for now, I'm just gonna set it restart always. Uh, then we will specify the ports, and the ports is an array, uh, and this is the port we're going to expose our applications, uh, application on. Um, on. In this case, I'm going to say I can access my API from the port 7000 on my workstation, but internally in Docker, it would be the AT port. So the first one means where we're going to access it on our PC. The second one means where it will run internally in Docker. Then we're going to say depends on and we're gonna have a, a DB server, which is a, a database which we're gonna specify uh, down below. It's not here yet, but just bear with me. And last but not least, the networks. So we're gonna say local dev. And this is everything we need to spin up our um, API using the Docker file we created here. However, our API is not the only thing. We also have the DB server, which is a database. And I'm gonna say, I want that from an image, and the image is Microsoft MSSQL, too many S's, server Linux. And we're going to go with Linux because even though we have the capability to run this here, as you can see, using um, Windows containers, I'm not going to use Windows containers because they're only supporting Windows and you want this to be as cross-platform as possible. So let's go with Linux. And we're going to say I want the... 2017 latest version of this image and then container name we're going to use the same db server and we're going to need to set up some environment variables so the ones we need is first and foremost accept ULA, which is the end user license agreement uh, it essentially will install this assuming we say yes to everything every terms and conditions and then MSSQL SA password, and this is the password that the super user, super admin uh, will have. I'm going to say Nick1234. That should be enough. And then we will specify the port. We're going to expose it on. I'm going to say MSSQL TCP port equals, and this is the default port. However, we can go here and say where I want to expose it really is, let's say this one, for example, and then the internal port will be the one we specified here. So again, second one means Docker internal, first one means what we expose. And last but not least, the networks, we will specify the local dev network. So here we have our Docker Compose and our application now is ready to be spun up. How can we do that? We go in the directory where the Docker Compose is and we will run partially here and all I'm gonna do let me make this bigger is docker compose build and this will pull 
everything. As you can see, it pulls the uh, .NET 2.2 SDK. It's going to pull the uh, runtime as well. This is what it's doing now. It's building and it also uh, pulled um, the database. And now we can do Docker Compose up. That's IP, sorry, the Compose up. And now it will start recreating or creating our servers. You can see that our application actually failed on first load. And that is because, as I can show you here, it could not connect. And why couldn't it connect? Because I didn't change the connection string on the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Let me just stop the servers here, go to the settings, change this to, there's two things I can change this. I can either say DB server, or I can just specify the local host and the port I set as external. You can go with either way. And then I need to change uh, this to use a username and password alternative. This would be user equals super admin and password equals name one, two, three, four. And this should be enough. I didn't misspell anything here, did I? No, it all looks good. Let me just say DB server here. And probably the reason why this is failing is because I never did um, a Docker build, Docker Compose build. So let me do that now. Docker Compose build. It shouldn't take long. It has all the images. And then Docker Compose up. And this should work. Yep. So everything is up and running now. If I go into localhost and 7000 swagger, as you can see, our app is running and it is running here. So let's go ahead and register test at test.com test 7777. We have a token, we have everything and we can use that token to just hit any endpoint, so. It's worth pointing out that this is not targeting our local machine, but rather the Docker instance in our uh, machine, which is a nice way to develop, because now everybody can use this to spin up our application locally. So our tables are created, everything has uh, was successfully spin up. We can see all the users now, I just create one. And it's simple as that now, Whenever you're done working, you just do a control C or Docker Compose down and um, everything stops running. As you can see, this is not running anymore. And if I do a Docker Compose down, it will even remove those containers. And if I try to refresh this database, you'll see that it will never come back because it doesn't actually exist. So simple as that, with this simple Docker file, we have our environment in Docker with both our API and our database. Let me know if you liked this video by leaving a like, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.